Hey folks, Comic Cowboy here, and welcome to another edition where I'm not going to talk about comic books in this session directly. I'm going to talk about the collectible gaming space and how it may correspond or it may not correspond to uh, what's happening today in the comic field. There is some folks that have theorized that the rise or the emergence of the collectible graded gaming space, which has happened really since uh, WADA came on the scene uh, and has continued to rise over the last 12 to 18 months, and you've seen uh, the auctions in the same places you buy the books, therefore some folks have made the uh, leap that the rise of this field and the dollars and the bidding that's happening now in the collectible gaming space is at the expense of comics. Uh, and it is actually a, a very neat hypothesis to uh, put forward because incidentally at this moment in time there is in the uh, collectible comic space if you look at prices in GP analysis or GPA or you just scan uh, completed auctions at Heritage, or you log through uh, Comic Link or Comic Connect, etc., you will see and you will notice a little bit of a decline in prices in, let's say, for example, Silver Age Marvel Keys, almost across the board. So whether you're talking Amazing Fantasy 15, Hulk 1, Avengers 1, X-Men 1, right? On and on and on. A lot of those books have gone down in price 5 to 8 percent, in some cases as much as 10 percent. The last four to six months for whatever reason. The DC Keys, uh, Showcase 22, Brave and Bold 28, uh, etc., those books, Showcase 4, uh, have been a little bit stagnant for a while because they've stumbled, at least in my opinion, this is the reason why, they've stumbled uh, so poorly uh, in the cinema that the books haven't done that well, haven't really recovered. Um, we'll see with the Joker uh, if there's any lift on those covers. Now the, the film may get uh, Best Picture. I have no idea if that will give... Uh, any bit of an Oscar bump <laughs> for Joker titles? I don't think so. Uh, excuse me, I'm just going to take a pull of this uh, Fort Point beer, which is delicious. I set up lights in here, uh, so it's a little bit of stronger, it's a little bit hotter in here uh, for the benefit of my 35 subscribers. Uh, anyway, there is some thesis that because folks are now buying these items, on Heritage in the Sunday auction, or they're members of Comic Link, and they now have uh, drifted uh, down the dark alley of collectible game collecting vis-a-vis uh, -vis Certified Link, that somehow there is a little bit of um, dollars in one bucket, which is the display you see before me, at the expense of what's happening in the collectible comic space. I do not think that is the case. I think there are enough buyers that are interested in comics and they stay in that realm. And I think there's enough folks that are in the collectible gaming space that have a budget and allowance and a passion for this material. And I don't think there is something innate about this product that immediately makes you think of comic books. They seem to be, uh, aside from the grading scale here, I really do not see how there could be any more association of the collectible gaming material than magic cards, than PSA sports cards, than we'll find for comics. And yet there is still a little bit of this stir uh, that this market has influenced the other. So let's talk about this market a little bit, just vis-a-vis -vis the lens of the comic space. And I will tell you, as I looked on YouTube, for information, 
good information about the collectible gaming space. There is not a lot of content out there. There are a lot of, uh, you know, what I call angry profits. Uh, and there are folks uh, with YouTube channels that are talking about collectible gaming, collectible grading gaming. They're talking about how the market's manipulated. They're talking how it's a speculative bubble. Uh, so there, there's a lot of that type of information out there and whether or not that happens to be true or not, I just think that is a cloud of negativity that is really going to uh, be a bit of a smoke screen with respect to you making intelligent, informed decisions about participating in this market because this market is a lot of fun. Gaming is a lot of fun. Before I got into the collecting of the games that you see before me, I have been and I am gaming. So uh, I picked up, you know, sealed copies of Fortnite. I happen to be playing the game quite a bit. I happen to think it's excellent and awesome and a lot of fun. The collectible value of Fortnite, and this is, uh, <laughs> it's not sealed. Uh, so it really has almost no value to it other than, you know, 30 to $40 because someone might actually just want this from a collecting perspective. Complete in box really isn't the way to go, especially with modern stuff, although this is kind of hard to find. Anyway, I play and enjoy Fortnite, uh, and I have certainly memories and affinity uh, for Super Mario Brothers and a lot of the Mario games and Mario-related games that came along uh, the shoot over the years, and so it was sort of natural, or Zelda, uh, that I started collecting this material, I thought it was cool, but what I did not do, uh, despite the hysteria uh, that you may encounter, is start selling off books to raise funds to buy this stuff. You know, I had the budget for the comic books and the money that I set aside to buy those books, I continue to do so. And for this space, I set aside a different budget and it wasn't uh, over here's Paul and over here's Peter and I'm moving money between the two guys, right? You know, it's just a different bag. Nevertheless, something can be said with the fact that these graded games first showed up in the Sunday Heritage Auction, about 20 to 25 lots. And that was, at least from my perspective, the first time that I saw this material was on Heritage. I was not in the collectible gaming space. I was not aware of WADA. You know, I did not have uh, an understanding and appreciation of the grading scale. I wasn't aware of this product. I wasn't aware of this company. Subsequently, I came to get to know them and get to understand what the business was. And another grading company that's been around uh, for quite a while uh, which is uh, VGA, uh, and here's this Pokemon in 80, has been on the market for years, and I did not buy this material, nor did I seek it out. Uh, I was aware it was out there, uh, but it wasn't uh, at the top of my list, I was collecting the books. So some folks are theorizing that this decline or the slight correction in the comic space is due to the rise of this collectible category and they have nothing to support that allegation. There's no data to support that. They do not know what the customer base on Heritage is or is not buying because the Heritage customer has purview to all the categories that Heritage represents and they're all there for you should you want to participate in rock posters, should you want to participate in rock memorabilia or collectible coins. They even have these mineral sales. They have uh, movie posters. They have a variety of categories on their site which from time to time, uh, the customer base may migrate from one category to the other, but I don't think the fact that they now include video games uh, is some touchstone for people to collect comics to uh, chase a totally different category just because they've seen it on Heritage. 
uh, and also with respect to certified link, um, that material uh, is separate from the comic link sales. Although they did uh, a bit ago tuck into a few of the sales uh, some video games. Uh, that I suppose they were probably teasing it out. And I was like, what the hell is this stuff? I would just move, move past the lot. I didn't want to see it. And I thought it was kind of goofy. Later, I was like, oh, okay, this is actually uh, a substantial and interesting category with a lot of people particip participating in it. When I first saw it, uh, I just moved past that lot. There, there isn't some um, real fundamental reason why someone might uh, be on certified link and comic link and deciding between one or the other. I think you collect coins, you go after them, you collect games, you go after them, you collect books, you go after those as well. I really think that it is true that towards the tail end of 2019 and the beginning of 2020, we did see depreciation in prices, as I mentioned before, in silver, golden age books, somewhat across the board. Why that is the case, I don't know. I think it has to do, in my perspective, with uh, potentially a bit of a hangover after the Avengers got out of the theater. And because that film was the culmination of years of films that got us to that moment. And now that it's over, it's a little bit like after the party and we're a little bit hungover waiting for the next big cinematic moment to come, which may be a few years down the line. I don't know. I can tell you with some degree of confidence that the rise of this collectible category, despite what folks on YouTube may be telling you, uh, it is not some moment of hysteria.